guys! I'm really excited to show you the amazing Scribbles That Matter B5 dot cross planner. This is, I think, one of the most phenomenal products that I have ever seen, and I'm really excited to use it. So this is a new type of planner from Scribbles That Matter that launched within the last few months, I think. And it comes in B5 and A5, and I got the B5 because I want to use it as my basically everything except for work planner, and so I thought that the A5 wouldn't be big enough, but the A5 looks really nice as well. It comes in this beautiful box, which has this awesome quote on it, and I think Dot Cross Planner is a great name for it because basically it has dots and crosses, and I will show you in a minute. So this is what the rest of the box looks like. It's a really nice, good quality, hard cardboard box and this is what the planner looks like. Sorry about the tripod legs, I haven't been able to figure out a way to get them out of the frame while still allowing you to see the entire planner because it's quite big. So this comes in a variety of different colors and they all have a solid main color and then a contrasting elastic and bookmark and pen loop and there are a lot of really nice colors on it but this was the one that kind of immediately drew me. There's also a purple with yellow elastic and a turquoise with pink elastic and a whole bunch of other really, really nice color combinations that I would like to use in future years. So you can see here it has a dot and a cross on the front and that's embossed and it's the only decoration that you have on the front. It's a very nice smooth but slightly patterned vegan leather. And then you can see here you have an elastic pen loop. I'd say it's a little bit bigger in size than the Leuchtturm stick-on pen loops and it has a nice sturdy metal rivet here which means that this isn't going to fall out and I think that's a really nice touch because often when you have built-in pen loops in planners and notebooks they end up falling out. So this is what the side looks like. It just says STM here and then the back is blank and I think it's just a really nice minimalist look, very clean and obviously we have beautiful rounded corners and then when you open it you have these nice blank end pages which are quite a thick cardstock and the paper is white. It's 120 GSM and it starts off with this page that says 2021 at the top. I'm assuming that these must have come out sometime in 2021 but I only found out about them in spring of 2022 so by the time I bought this this 2021 was already irrelevant but I'm just going to put a sticker over this and one of the things that I like about this is that it's very very minimalist in what it includes in terms of printing so it's quite easy to cover up with stickers if that's what you want to do and in my case that is definitely what I want to do so I think that the 120 GSM paper is perfect because not only is scribbles that matter paper very good for fountain pen ink and carrying all kinds of different media but it's not so thick that it feels like cardstock it, so if you compare it to like say the original of paper which is 160 gsm that feels much much thicker 120 gsm is still reasonably thick but it it still feels very much like paper um which i think is a nice thing because that means that if you want to put stickers on it the paper isn't so thin that the stickers will feel heavy on it. This just has the last half of 2021 and what I'm thinking of doing is covering this up with the year that I started and just using a monthly sticker kit from Etsy to cover these up. So I'm going to start this at the beginning of April 2023 so it matches my Hobonichi cousin which is a spring start so I'll just start dating it from April 2023 and go on and then likewise it gives you the whole year of 2022 so I'm just gonna cover this up and basically have 18 months worth of monthly pages. What I really like about this is that it's all dot grid. You have dot grid columns so I'm not sure how easy it is to see but this dot grid basically runs like this right underneath the month and then you've got a little break and then you have another column and then another column and so you have these monthly slots where you can write things and I think that this is really nice because you can write down highlights or if you're tracking something by month you have a great space to put that in. I personally am not a huge fan of the font that they used here. It looks kind of like an Arial I would say, it's some kind of sans serif font but it's fine, it's pretty neutral and then in my case I'm going to cover it all with stickers anyway so it doesn't really matter. Now a beautiful touch is that at the bottom you have page numbers in grey so they're very light and you can ignore them if you don't want them but I think that this is fabulous because it means that if you're using this for anything where you want to be able to keep track of what page certain things are on that means that it's already been taken care of for you. So it starts here on the page with the 2021 at the top and then the dot grid. That's page one and it goes all the way up until the end which is 
235. Page 1 is on the left and page 2 is on the right, which is the same way that Hobonichi does it. And the opposite of how books that are written in languages running from left to right do it, where normally the even page would be on the left. So then after the monthly spreads, you get several pages of empty dot grids, which I think is really nice. And you can see here, if I bring it a little bit closer, that the dot grids are a very small, faint gray. So they don't overwhelm you. You can easily see them, but they fade into the background quite nicely. And a really cool feature, and the reason why this is called the dot cross planner, is that right in the middle of the page, it has a cross. And then it also has a line here and a line here and then a line here and the line here. So basically it makes it much easier for you if you want to design spreads because you can see where the center is without counting and you can also see where the center is at the top and on the sides and at the bottom. So I think that that is an excellent feature. This is the one on the bottom if you couldn't see it when I was showing it before because this is so big that it is not fitting in my full frame. So you have five double page spreads of this dot grid, so 10 full pages. This I think is a perfect planner for if you want the flexibility of a blank notebook or a bullet journal but you don't want to have to draw out all the spreads yourself, this is a great happy medium because as we will see in a minute it has a lot of pre-printed spreads but then it also gives you a lot of freedom so like I said I'm thinking of using this as my personal planner and I'd like to use this for trackers of things that I would like to be able to refer to throughout the year so for example I'm thinking like maybe TV show trackers book trackers planner order trackers, things that I will be able to come back to again and again and that it will be easy knowing that they're right at the beginning of the book. Maybe also things like household task tracker, dog-related trackers, like when they've had their checkups, when they've had their vaccinations, things like that, that it will be easy to come back to the beginning of the book and refer to. And so I really like the fact that they've given you 10 pages of that because I don't know of any other planner that gives you 10 blank pages right at the beginning that you can use however you want. So I think that that's a great feature. Now we come to the bookmarks, and there is one purple and one green. The purple one is a bit shorter than the green one. And I really like the fact that each bookmark is in one of the colors of the rest of the planner, because quite often when you have two bookmarks, they'll give you one that's like in a color of the planner, and then the other one is like always black or always gray or something. So I like the fact that they're both coordinated with the planner. And then we come to our first blank monthly spread. You have some dot grid here at the top. Then you have a vertical sidebar on the right, and then you have your monthly layout with five rows. So that means that if you have a month with six rows, you need to like kind of double up at the end, but that probably won't happen very often. And then each of the horizontal lines is solid, but each of the vertical lines is dotted. And I like the fact that this is square. I really don't like it when monthly spreads are kind of oblong. I think it's much nicer when it's square. It doesn't have a place for you to put the date, which I think is also nice because that means that you have the flexibility to decide where you want it. So you also have some empty space here at the top where you can put the day of the week, which I think is nice because the dot grid like kind of stops here. There are three rows of dot grid. So you've got a margin at the top and then you've got this blank space here. And then at the bottom, you don't have any dot grid, but you do have the page numbers. And there's also a little space to write here if you wanted to put something very small down there. So then it goes instantly into the weekly spread. And this is something else that really drew me to this planner. This is like one of the best weekly spreads I've ever seen in one of these undated planners. And I think it's just a huge, vast improvement on the previous edition of their bullet planner that they had before. I bought one and made a video about it when it first came out a few years ago, but I think that this version is like 10,000 times better. This really has like fixed all of the things that I didn't quite like about the first edition, and it's so flexible and so beautiful, and I think that there is such attention to detail, and it's just lovely, and I can't wait to move into it. It's really, really hard to restrain myself until the end of March 2023. So your weekly layout, you've got, again, three lines of dot grid at the top with a good margin up above it, and then you have eight weekly columns. So one, two, three, four on one side, and then one, two, three, four on the other side. And each one is identical, and I really like that because that means that if you want to have your sidebar here, you can, and if you want to have it here, you can. So at the bottom, we have quite a goodly amount of dot grid again, and I love the fact that except for the pre-printed layouts, you've got dot grid everywhere. I think that that makes it feel like a bullet journal that you have designed yourself, except that the spreads are pre-printed and they're all perfectly straight and, 
you know, not wonky like they would be if I tried to set them up myself. And also I didn't have to do the work of setting each one up. So another really nice feature that it has here is that there is a very, very faint dotted line dividing the top third from the middle and then another one dividing the middle from the bottom third. So you've got each column divided into three. And that means that if you want to have a layout like the Happy Planner or the Erin Condren verticals, where you can divide this into, say, morning, afternoon, evening, or work, home, personal, or any other categories that you might want to use, you can really easily do that. So I'm going to use mine for morning, afternoon, evening. And I don't think that I'll label them like morning, afternoon, evening, which you could do if you put in headers. What I think I'm going to do instead is just kind of know that when I want to write appointments in here that this top third is going to be for things that are happening like up until noon and then this is going to be for things that are happening in the afternoon and then this will be for things that happen in the evening or night because at the moment I'm using a horizontal layout kind of like the weeks where my appointments are all on the left hand side of the page and it's very difficult to get in any kind of hourly planning in that sort of a layout, for me at least. So I think that this is going to make life much easier. And you have enough room that you can put headers at the top. So if you want to put the day and the date here, you can do that. And that's what I'm going to do. And for my planner, I'm going to put in the Gregorian date and then also the date on the Jewish calendar. And there's enough room for that. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted the B5. I also wanted the B5 because I'm just going to put tons and tons of stickers in this. And so I wanted to make sure that there was room for that and also writing. And then at the bottom, you have enough room that you could do things like meal planning or shopping lists or daily to do's. So like if you put your appointments here, you have plenty of room for daily to do's at the bottom here. And I think that this is really nice how it's empty and you can do whatever you want with it. It doesn't prescribe. If you wanted to bring these lines down here so that you have clear divisions between the days, you could quite easily do that because the lines line up with the dots. La! Isn't that beautiful? It makes life really easier for you. You can just get a ruler or freehand, continue these lines down here. Like again, I think really, really good attention to detail. So you get five weekly spreads in a row, and then you have a double page spread of empty dot grid, again, with the cross in the middle and the straight lines on the four corners so that you can easily make up your own spreads. And then you get another monthly layout followed by another five weeks. So you can really do what you want with this because if you want to have it like Erin Condren style where the last week of the month starts in the next month, you can do that. Or if you want to have it in the previous month where it began, if that makes sense, you can do that. So I think that this is just a really, really nice flexible setup. And it carries on like that every month. So you get your five weeks of weekly pages and then you get a blank double page spread and then you get a new monthly layout. And there's enough of this to last you for 12 months. I guess the only thing about this layout that I will say is that if you're used to the Hobonichi type layout where you've got all of the months at the beginning followed by all of the weeks together, then this might irk you a bit, and that is what I'm used to. But I don't mind the fact that they've done it like this. So the really cool thing is that once you reach the end, you'd think, okay, that's it, I'll have like, you know, maybe another five note pages and then the book will end. No, no, look at what you get here. You get this amazing chunk of empty dot grid pages from page 180, which is the last weekly spread, until page 235. So you get like 55 pages of notes. That's an incredible amount. That's huge. That's almost as much as you get in a regular Hobonichi Weeks. So I think that that is amazing. And this means that you have so much freedom if you want to make daily lists or if you want to make lots of collections or if you want to have lots more trackers, you can do all of that. So what I'm thinking of doing is basically putting in everything that I want to have apart from work so that this is like my one-stop shop for everything except for journaling and, you know, like really specific things like like my washi graveyard and my washi swatch book, everything else is going to be in here. So it really will be effectively like a bullet journal where you can put everything. And that's made possible by the fact that A, the B5 is really roomy, and B, by the fact that they give you so many notes pages. And so I just think that that is an incredible touch, which you won't find in many other planners. 55 notes pages, and they're big, they're B5. So again, this has the cross in the middle and then the straight lines on the four corners so you can make your own spreads, whatever you want to do. And that continues on until we get to page 235, at which point you have two pages of pen test. 
So the first pen test page actually goes backwards, kind of. So if you were to do your pen testing here, the show through would be on here. Then we have a second pen test page. It goes on to the cardstock at the back. I think that this is actually more suitable, and maybe that's what they had in mind, for just basically testing different types of ink and seeing what they look like on the paper. I'm torn between just using black ink and letting the stickers do all of the talking or using different colors of ink so that the whole thing is an explosion of color. I'm not sure yet. And then we have end pages which have this wavy pattern and then you have this nice gusseted pocket with a beautiful detail. The gusset is purple and it's very sturdy. It's not made out of paper, it's made out of some kind of reinforced material. And the wavy pattern continues on the inside. And then we have the back with the rivet for the pen loop. And that's it. So this is just a really, really amazing option if you're looking for a combination between a blank notebook and a planner and you want to be able to date it yourself. So like I said, I am not going to be able to start using this until the end of March 2023, which is very, very hard. But if you want to see somebody who is already using one of these and is also using an A5 version, then check out Laura Lai Lee, whose channel I will leave linked below, because she is doing amazing things with both of her scribbles that matter dot grid planners. So I hope that you enjoyed this. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.